I've been keeping fish for nearly half my life and it's hilarious to me that a lot of the myths that were around back when I started are still out there to this day. These are things that a lot of fish keepers believe but are simply not true. So to give you a little bit more clarity on this, here are 10 of the biggest fish keeping myths. The first thing that every fish keeper needs to learn is the nitrogen cycle. People not understanding this cycle is what has killed more fish than anything else in this hobby. Unfortunately, the nitrogen cycle is not something that an employee can explain to you in two or three minutes while you're there at the pet store buying your first tank. A lot of times the employee will be in a rush to get to other customers, so they'll just tell you, just let your tank run for a month and you'll be fine. Here's the thing, an aquarium simply running accomplishes nothing but moving water around. There needs to be an ammonia source in the tank to allow the bacteria to grow to create the cycle. So you let the aquarium run for a month like the employee told you to, but nothing has been accomplished because there's no ammonia source. Then you throw in a whole bunch of new fish and you're so excited, but a week later the ammonia spikes and they're all dead. Learn the nitrogen cycle before you buy your first aquarium. It's gonna make everyone's lives so much easier. If you need more information on how to cycle an aquarium, I'll put a card up in the corner. You can watch that video. Hopefully it'll make things much more clear for you and you won't kill a bunch of fish. It's human nature for us to wanna to clean things when they're not looking so good. When things get dirty, we want to clean them up and make them look their best, right? But when it comes to fish, when it comes to our aquarium, this could actually be a death sentence for our fish. This is one of those situations where you think you're doing the right thing, but you're actually doing the worst thing. I'm definitely not saying don't clean your aquarium. What I'm trying to say is don't go overboard. The mistake a lot of new fish keepers make is that they'll take their filter apart and they'll scrub it and they'll clean it until it's brand new looking. And it's just like it was when they got it out of the box. They'll drain the tank and scrub the interior, trying to get all the dirt and all the algae out of it. An aquarium has bacteria that's growing inside of the tank and even in the filter. This is good bacteria. We want this. This bacteria is critical to the health of your aquarium. Without it, your aquarium will have nothing to break down the ammonia and nitrates in your tank. When the ammonia goes up and there's nothing in your aquarium to bring it back down, it's like your fish are in a gas chamber. We all want a clean tank, but don't go overboard. If all of this is confusing to you, then I suggest you watch some videos on the nitrogen cycle. I completely understand. We've all been new fish keepers. I'll go ahead and put some links in the description. I should be able to say that aquarium air pumps are not oxygen tanks and that be it. But you're not gonna let me get away with that, so here goes. At the surface of your aquarium, there is a gas exchange. It's kind of like the human lungs. We breathe in oxygen and we breathe out carbon dioxide. The surface of your water does the same thing. Oxygen goes in, carbon dioxide goes out. This will happen whether the water is stagnant or not, but it happens at a much slower rate if the water's just sitting there still. When the surface of the water is agitated, it accelerates this gas exchange. More oxygen can come in, more carbon dioxide will go out. This is why we always want the water in our aquariums moving. We don't want it sitting there stagnant. The filter in our aquarium will certainly move the water, but sometimes we want a little bit more so we can add an air stone or some kind of bubbler to get that exchange happening even faster, get the water moving even more. So yes, air pumps and air stones do a whole lot more than just creating pretty bubbles in the tank. They improve the overall health of your aquarium but they're not oxygen tanks. I guess I could have just asked a question rather than explain all that. How many elderly people do you see walking around with aquarium air pumps strapped to their belts? I bet not many. We used to have a fish store and we would have customers come in to get advice from us on how to set up an aquarium. 
One of the questions that would be asked is, what size filter should I get? If I get a really big filter, do I have to do less water changes? If they asked John, he would say, don't be lazy. But if they asked me, I'd be a little bit more nicer about the whole thing, believe it or not. Okay, here's the deal. A larger filter will process more water through the media, but it does not mean it relieves you of doing more work. When it's been a while since your last water change, the nitrates, they're gonna start elevating, whether you have a large filter or not. When those nitrates start to elevate, you have to do a water change, period. The filter has nothing to do with it. A big filter will keep the water nice and crisp, but it's the things that you can't see that make us do maintenance. Do your job, take care of your fish, no matter how big your filter is. How many times have you heard it? My tank is a mess. I need to go get one of those sucker fish to help me clean it up. Listen folks, aquariums are work. They're just, it's just part of the deal. It's something that has to be done. And most fish keepers that you ask would tell you that the work involved is part of what makes it a fun hobby. Fish like plecos and algae eaters will definitely help you control algae and they'll patrol the substrate and pick up little bits of things left around. But they're not your main service. Yes, they'll definitely help, but they're not problem solvers. There is no such thing as an aquarium that you never have to touch. Whether it's algae on the glass or a buildup of waste in the substrate, we need to still get in there and do our job. It's part of the deal. These fish shouldn't be treated any different than any other fish that you have. You need to keep the water clean for them and don't kid yourself into thinking that a dirty tank is good for them because it gives them more to eat. No, you still have to feed these fish and I would recommend feeding them a specific food that's designed just for them. This is a common misconception by a lot of fish keepers. And honestly, in my own experiences, it couldn't be farther from the truth. I guess the argument could be made that if you have a physical condition, this works better for you because you can't carry as much water around. So, okay. I totally get that, but other than that, that's about it. Think about it like this. Let's say John and I go to a Mexican restaurant and he orders a lot of beans, like he always does. So when those beans settle in and they start doing what beans do, do you think I'd rather be in a gymnasium with John or in a car with the windows rolled up? Actually, there's no safe place to be in that situation. 99.9% .9 of the time, I really do love this man. Anyway, it's the exact same thing with an aquarium. Do you think if something breaks bad, it's gonna move quicker in a five gallon or a 30 gallon tank? Whether it's an algae outbreak or an ammonia spike, it's gonna do more damage in a tiny body of water than a larger body of water. Don't get me wrong, I have tons of small tanks and I absolutely love them, but I just want you to know they're more work than you think. I don't know what she's talking about. I've never ordered extra beans. This is one that I have heard more times than I can count. When I set up my new tank, I'm gonna take water from my old tank and put it into the new one, and then it'll be ready to go. The idea is that using old water from an old aquarium is gonna bring with it all of the beneficial bacteria, which will instantly cycle your aquarium. Not only does this not cycle your new aquarium, but it's also a complete waste of time. Beneficial bacteria that controls ammonia and nitrites in your aquarium is something that grows on surfaces. It's not in the water. So taking water from an old aquarium and putting it into a new one literally accomplishes nothing. If you're looking to take something out of your old aquarium and move it into the new one to help boost the cycle, maybe do that with some old substrate or some of your decorations or even better yet, media from your filter that is going to accomplish what you're looking for. Forget about the water. Then you'll be accomplishing something. Yay, here we go. This should be fun. Feeder fish are a big part of this hobby and I get it. A lot of people don't have the same opinion I do and they like to feed their fish feeder fish. 
I'm not saying these are bad people. You can like whatever you want. I'm just saying people that feed feeder fish to their fish haven't thought this through very well. I mean, have you seen the conditions that these fish are kept in? There's no doubt that they have parasites or some kind of a bacteria. These poor, poor fish. These fish are raised in giant ponds, which means they have to compete with thousands of other fish to get food. So most of them starve. And another thing, if a fish dies, what do you think happens to that fish? Do you think somebody takes it out? No, the other fish eat that fish. So whatever that fish died from, the other fish are going to eat it. It could have died from a disease, it could have died from starvation. It's really hard to tell. But the fish that are eating that dead fish are now the ones that are going to be feeder fish to your fish. So before people get upset with me, like they tend to do, I'm not talking about live foods, I'm talking about feeder fish. Can we just all be friends? Since we're already on the topic of feeder fish and we've already made a bunch of people upset, let's go ahead and throw some more fuel on the fire. I love the internet. I've heard from so many people over the last 25 years, my fish will eat nothing but feeder fish. I've even had people say to me, I don't like feeding my fish feeder fish, but it's all he'll eat. Let's break out the human analogy again, shall we? I can remember with our middle daughter sitting at the dinner table with my mother and she just wouldn't eat. And I said to my mom, I don't know what it is. I just can't get her to eat. And my mom said something then that I'll never forget. She said, she'll eat when she gets hungry enough. Moms know everything. The same is true for fish, I promise you. I've done it dozens and dozens of times. So let me tell you a story. Lisa and I used to have a fish store a while back. We don't have it anymore, but when we had it, we had a guy come in and offer to give us a wild caught Florida gar that he couldn't house anymore. And I said, sure, I'll take it, that's no problem. I love those. And he said, well, the only thing is, you're gonna have to feed him feeder fish. And I said, well, I can promise you that's not gonna happen. And he said, well, I don't know what you're gonna do because that's all he'll eat. He said, I've tried everything, every single pellet out there. I've tried frozen whole shrimp. I've tried it all and he just won't eat anything. And I said very calmly, he'll be fine. Don't worry about it. Well, that guy came back into the store about three weeks later and I didn't even say a word to him. I just saw him, I looked him in the eye and I walked over to the 150 gallon tank that we had that gar in. And I grabbed a handful of Hikari food sticks and I dropped them in while I was looking at him. And guess what happened? That gar tore up five or six of them right away. The guy was very impressed and he said, how did you do that? What did you do? And I said, nothing. And he was like, huh? I said, it's simple. I did exactly what I've done with all of the other fish that I've done this with. I changed nothing about my routine. I had other fish in that tank. I had an Oscar and some Red Devils, and I fed that tank like I normally would. I didn't make any special exceptions for individual fish. And eventually, the gar got hungry, and he figured out that, well, that must be food because the other fish are eating it, and he started eating that food. It's really that simple. The bottom line is I have never had a fish that I could not convert to some type of dry food, whether it be freeze dried krill or even maybe frozen food or pellets, I've gotten them to eat it every single time. It just takes patience. Like my mom said, when they get hungry enough, they'll eat. Okay, show of hands, how many of you all knew this was gonna be number one? This myth has been around ever since we've been keeping fish in glass boxes and it's not gonna go away. I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. I started keeping fish 10 years ago with John and one of the questions I asked him was, it's not gonna grow any larger than the size of the tank, right? <laughs> yeah, I did it too. <laughs> Listen, it's true that a fish will stop growing in a tank. It's not like if you put a red tail catfish in a five gallon tank, it's eventually gonna get so big that the tank blows up. It'll stop growing, but is that a good thing? Absolutely not. 
Stunted growth isn't good for any living thing. They live a miserable, painful life, and eventually they just die. The fish's body might not get any bigger, but the organs will continue to grow. And this can cause the fish to look deformed and even make it to where they can't swim around. It's horrible. Yes, you've been able to get the fish to stop growing, and by doing that, you've tortured the poor thing until it dies. And trust me, it won't take long. We've given this advice a couple times in this 10 Things series. If someone who claims to know a lot about fish comes up to you and says, oh, a fish will only grow to the size of the tank, you need to just walk away from that person. Just walk away. I wouldn't even talk to him again. So there you go, the 10 biggest fish keeping myths. We upload a new episode of this 10 Things series every single Sunday. So if you liked this, if you enjoyed it, found it helpful, found it entertaining, why don't you consider subscribing to the channel so that you don't miss next week's episode. You can also watch all of the videos that we've already done in this series. They're really a lot of fun. Thank you so much for watching this. And I look forward to talking to you again next week where we'll bring you 10 more things.